Men's soccer is back at the Dembski Sports Complex, getting two wins last weekend, including an overtime thriller. Game winner off the foot of Nico Baudo. Hashtag Griff Sports back in action, too, for this fall season of Canisius Athletics. Welcome back to a new year of Hashtag Griff Sports. I'm Joe Rotigliano, and I am joined by Tori Napo from the Griff softball team. Tori, welcome to the team. How does it feel? Thank you. I'm honored to be here. All right. Well, it was the men's soccer team that earned the only two wins for the Griffs last weekend, and we'll get to them in a moment. But first, let's head out to Spokane, Washington, where the Volley Griffs were in action. The Griffs were swept on the weekend despite being up two sets to none on both Montana State and Grand Canyon. On the bright side, five players set career highs over the weekend. Junior outside hitter Rachel Klein posted 19 digs on Friday, and Grace Stryker, who takes over as the team's full-time setter this season, put up 45 assists in the loss to Montana State. Elsewhere, sophomore Katie Tyler had 18 kills. Jackie Malusa had six blocks, and freshman Kristen Plukas had 13 digs on Sunday. The three losses dropped the Volley Griffs to 0-6 on the season. And things didn't get much better for women's soccer. Also out west for the weekend, they dropped a couple of contests to Pacific and Sacramento State, being outscored 4-1. The lone goal came on Friday. It was sophomore Callie Good's first collegiate goal, just the second shot the Griffs have been able to put in the back of the net all season. They've connected on just two of 77 shots in their first six games. Things weren't much better in the golf world. Griffs Golf finished 11th out of 14 teams at the Colgate Invitational. Meanwhile, the cross-country teams competed in the UB Stampede. The Griffs were placed on the men's side by sophomore Travis Jordan and freshman Gustavo Gonzalez, while the women's squad was led by sophomores Macy Walker and Katherine Niederproom. And finally, on to men's soccer. The team won its first two games at home in exciting fashion. On Friday night, they did it behind the strong goalkeeping presence of Syracuse transfer Andrew Coughlin with four of his five saves coming in the second half. And senior Derek Meyer netted his first collegiate goal in the one nothing victory over Bucknell. They took part in another thriller on Sunday afternoon. Down 2-0 in the second half, they began to mount their comeback in the 76th minute. Asani Samuels cut the deficit to 2-1 with his second goal on the season. And in the 86th minute, freshman Anthony Mandela headed his first collegiate goal to tie it at 2. Double overtime now in the 103rd minute, and Nico Baudo hits the back of the net, and the Griffs get the weekend sweep. So here's how the Griffs stand after three weeks of play. The Volley Griffs are still looking for their first win. They sit at 0-6, while women's soccer is 1-5 with their lone win coming against Roberts Wesleyan at home in double overtime. And men's soccer is at 2-2 after consecutive wins. And coming off those two exciting wins, the Griffs will be featured on the hashtag Griff Sports Game of the Week. Canisius, UB, the men's soccer team at the Dembski Sports Complex, Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Head coach Dermot McGrain will be in the studio in just a moment to tell you all about it. You're watching Hashtag Griff Sports. Stay right there. Welcome back to Hashtag Griff Sports. Kyle Ferrara in Studio B with head coach Dermot McGrain of the men's soccer team. 
focusing on our game of the week, men's soccer versus UB and coach are coming off a really exciting weekend with the home opener and the overtime win on Sunday. Gets you guys to two and two. They had the tough weekend to start out. What went into last weekend that got two wins as opposed to the two losses the weekend before? Um, one big thing is, is the, the, the weekend before we played top 25 teams. Um, you know, the, the level of competition is obviously very good. Um, you know, we learned from the few mistakes we made and uh, had a good week of training preparing for Bucknell, who again are a very good team. They won 11 games last year. Um, you know, I think we just keep improving every day. Um, you know, I expect us, you know, to be even better two weeks from now. So um, I think big thing is, is we've got a lot of new players who are getting used to the pace of Division One soccer, um, which is, you know, everyone transitions at their own time. Um, but I think, I think that's a big factor for a lot of our new guys. One of those new, new guys is, of course, your goalie, Andrew Coughlin. Can you talk about how well he's performed? Um, Andrew's brought a, a lot to our team. Um, he's, he's a fabulous goalkeeper. He's got great reaction saves um, and, and great communication with his defense. Um, but he's brought a lot of leadership to our team as well. Uh, he's a very mature young man. Um, he vocalizes thing well, uh, things well with the team. Um, you know, and, and he's, he, he, he leads by example. He's one of the hardest workers on our team. Um, he's been a great addition to our squad. You know, offensively, it seemed to be a struggle for you guys at points last year. Have you seen a lot of improvement at the beginning of this season? So far, it's looking good. Um, we have Asani, Asani Samuels, um, who is playing the best soccer of his life at this point. Uh, but we've brought in a lot of different weapons to help him out. Um, we obviously have Mitchell Cancilla, um, who medically had to redshirt last year with a broken ankle. Um, oh, sorry, um, torn ligaments in his ankle. He's back playing now. We also brought in Matthew Santos, who's um, been the leading scorer in Ontario the last two years, uh, and he's doing tremendously well. Um, and then Anthony Mandola, who got the uh, you know the tying goal on um, on Sunday. Um, you know, he played for New Jersey Academy. Um, great player, and, and we're expecting a lot out of him as well. So obviously, it was an encouraging weekend. What are some things you want to pinpoint in practice, though? going into this weekend of the game against UB? Uh, playing for the full 90 minutes. You know, um, you know, I thought we did well against Bucknell. Our concentration was good. Um, you know, against Bryant, you know, we didn't show up in the first half. Um, I mean, it shows when we only took two shots in the first half and 18 in the second. Um, that's a vast difference. Um, so we need to play for the full 90 minutes. Uh, we've got to cut down still on some of the mental errors, which is causing us to give up goals. Um, so it's, it's more mental preparation than anything going into this weekend. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we will be a lot more rested than uh, the University of Buffalo because they play on Friday and we have Friday off. Um, so we kind of get to sit back, watch them Friday night, and uh, be ready for them on Sunday. What about, you just kind of talked about UB and, and started to, but more specifically, can you speak to the challenges that they're going to present? Yeah, you know what? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm, I know the head coach very well since he actually played for me when I was the assistant coach at Coastal Carolina. Uh, we've been friends for years, so there's not really too many secrets about our teams. Um, they are very talented, but they're also very young, starting mostly freshmen and sophomores. Uh, so I think our experience is, is going to be a big factor in the game. Um, our fitness level, um, I believe we're fitter than they are anyway, but they're coming off the Friday night game, which is going to help us. Um, but like any Division One game, there is no easy games. I mean, Bryant was supposed to be an easy game for us, but as it proves, there are no easy games um, at our level. There's so much parity within Division One soccer. It's ridiculous. So um, on any given day, the 200th ranked team could beat a top 20 team. All right, Coach, thanks for coming in again. Sunday, 7 p.m., men's soccer versus UB. That's our game of the week, and we'll have all the coverage for you. Now back to... Joe and Tori who will look at the rest of the action in Griff Sports this weekend. Thank you, Kyle, for that uh, great interview with Coach McGrain. And so here are a couple of the big games this weekend that we've got here on Griff Nation. Uh, so we've got the women's soccer team playing Cleveland State tomorrow at home at 7 p.m. And then they will also play Binghamton Sunday. And then also you see that Canisius will be playing UB. We talked about that. And then also the volleyball team heads to St. Louis, they will play Air Force, St. Louis, and Omaha. So make sure to keep an eye on those games this week. 
And still to come on Hashtag Griff Sports, our men's basketball analyst Jordan LaBarber will break down the Griff's schedule for this season. And women's soccer keeper Bridget St. Ledger will be right here in the studio. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Hashtag Griff Sports. I'm here with women's soccer goalkeeper Bridget St. Ledger. And Bridget, you know, you're stepping into a new starting role with the Griffs this season. And, you know, we graduated a pretty solid goalkeeper last year in Meg Talk. How do you, you know, keep up that defensive presence, uh, you know, anchoring the defense for you guys? Well, luckily we have uh, our starting four back coming back this year. Um, it's obviously hard to step into a role where Talk had started for two years. But uh, I think I've you know, developed a good relationship with the defense, and uh, I think we've done pretty well so far in uh, working together. So hopefully that continues. Now, a little bit of a roller coaster start for you guys uh, as this year has begun. You did pick up a, a W at home against Robert, Roberts Wesleyan. You know, how do you guys you know, pull through that as you head towards you know, MAC play? What, what do you guys have to do? Well, uh, the good news is that we're not really getting killed. We're in the fight every game, and uh, we just need to find the back of the net a couple of times and keep one more out of ours, and hopefully that uh, helps us going forward with uh, going into MAC play and getting into the tournament. Now, this past weekend, you guys went out west and you played a couple of teams in California, Pacific and Sacramento State. You know, how was that experience? Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it's Bernie Bowen's hometown, so we were happy to uh, get her out there, get a home game for her. Um, we, had, uh, we had a tough, tough loss against Pacific. We came back and tied it up. Unfortunately, uh, didn't come out with the win. But our Sacramento game, we uh, played tough. It was middle of the day in California sun, and that was pretty hot, but we had a fun trip traveling out there together and seeing all that. Well, we're happy to have you back now. You're heading towards MAC play. What is going to be the key for the conference uh, schedule this year? Uh, the good news is that once conference play starts, anything can change. Um, if we step up our game for conference play, hopefully that uh, we'll be able to get some wins there. And I, I think really just uh, keeping goals out of the back of our net, playing solidly, uh, transitioning through the midfield, and you know finding the back of the net is probably key for us. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by Hashtag Griff Sports. Bridges St. Ledger, you can catch her Friday night at uh, 7 o'clock on the Dembski Sports Complex against Cleveland State and then again on Sunday at 2. So come see her play and the rest of the Griffs.
Jordan LeBarber joins us live in Studio B to go over some men's basketball. Their schedule came out a couple weeks ago, and we're not seeing a Notre Dame on there. We're not seeing a Syracuse on there. Uh, it, it seems less exciting. Is that because, well, it is going to be a less exciting season? Uh, it, it could be. Um, and, I, and I don't know that it will definitely be less excited. I think best case scenario, if this team performs up to the best case, it'll be competitive. And you don't want, uh, we had in the past when um, Tom Prada was the coach, you had some big games scheduled for some, some weaker teams. They'd go up to UNLV, they'd go up to Syracuse, and those games wouldn't be competitive. It's a fun experience, sure. But the opponent scheduled this year, with the young team that they're going to be putting out there, I think we'll have a chance to watch some good basketball. Best case scenario. So you think it's possible that, you know, with with a weaker schedule, you know, none of those really big games. This is going to be a year that's going to be better to just regroup, rebuild, figure out who the new key pieces are to this team. Obviously, they lost so many seniors. Is that going to be this kind of year? Or is that what people should expect? Uh, absolutely. I think um, there'll definitely be a period of self-identification. You know, trying to figure out what this team is all about. As you lose, you know, three seniors, lose a couple seniors the year before, um, they're going to have to do a lot of that, and that's been the case the past couple years because we came in with an influx of red shirts who graduated right away. Um, this year could be the start to where we have a consistent team for a few years in a row, and uh, it's going to be a year of rebuilding, I think. So we know who's not on the schedule, but non-conference rise. Who is on the schedule that people should get excited about? Well, you got Cornell, which is certainly a school people excited, but. Um, really, the big thing is a lot of return games this year. Um, Vermont, we're going to host Stony Brook. We host Holy Cross. These are all return games that we'll get out of the way. We don't have to deal with anymore. So um, Coach Barron's going to have some more flexibility in the future to you know, f form his schedule the way he wants it. Matt Conference basketball has been maybe not the best to watch, but some of the most fun to watch the last couple of years. There might be a changing of the guard at the top. But if we look at the Griff schedule in the MAC, you know, where are the highs and the lows? Well, you know, I think the Mac's going to be very interesting this year. All the teams at the top lost key pieces. I do think Iona might go into it again as a favorite because they're so good at keeping that consistent um, team. But I think the parity will be at, at a high this year. It, it does, oh, there's always a lot of parity in the Mac, but uh, this year more than ever, I think Canisius could find itself as high as four or five or as low as uh, last place. So, so all right. You just gave us such a broad range. Let's be a little more specific. Where, where do you see them? Come on. Where do I see them? Uh, let me say sixth. I'll say sixth. Sixth in the Mac. Who do you see at the top of the Mac? Um, I think Iona is going to be strong. I think Sienna proved last year they're a strong team, and they're returning more than any other team. Um, and I think St. Peter's is a wild card for one of the top teams. St. Peter's, of course. The Griffin sleeper pick last year didn't quite work out. <laughs> Jordan LaBarber, not just our men's basketball beat reporter anymore. He's the big guy over at the Griffin, editor-in-chief. Uh, Thanks for joining us, and I'm sure you'll be on much more as we get going <laughs> through the semester. Now let's send it right back to Joe and Tori. So the women's basketball schedule was also released, and a couple of big-name schools on that schedule as well, including uh, Syracuse, and also you see a couple of games there on the – Graphic, UB will be a big game. And so really a couple of big games here for women's basketball. Another year, another big season for Terry Zay's squad, and hopefully a season where they can come up with a few more wins than last year, of course. And now we're going to move on to our Golden Performer of the Week. Tori, what do you got for us? Um, well, this week's Golden Performer goes to men's soccer goalkeeper Andrew Coughlin, who led the Griffs defensively in both their contests um, on the weekend. Good job, Andrew. And the top play of the weekend goes to Nicolo Baudo and his game winner, which you saw earlier. You'll see it here, putting it in the back of the net to give the Griffiths the double overtime victory over Bryant on Sunday. And so that is our top play of the week. And first show in the books. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have you back here with hashtag Griff Sports. Stay with us all, all season, all semester, all year long. I'm Joe Rotigliano, and from everybody else here at Hashtag Griff Sports, we'll see you next week.